All right, now let's look at the Baltimore Ravens and the Philadelphia Eagles battle of the birds in this one. Yeah, I'm not really excited for this game. You know, every week we have a few games that are really pumped for. The Texans-Titans game that we just talked about, really excited for that one. This one, I'm less enthralled for. But well, there's there's a few storylines I want to monitor. I'm frustrated with both of these teams right now for different reasons, uh, as we'll explain when we get to the starts and sits. But in terms of how Vegas is feeling about this one, I feel like we're kind of on the same page. 47 over under, you know, below 50. Anytime it's below 50, that's a little bit lower for the week. Nothing crazy. Right now, the Ravens are uh, implied to win by seven and a half points. So, you know, both of these teams are implied to score above 20. So it should still be at least a decent game for fantasy. But honestly, both of these defenses have been pretty good at slowing down quarterbacks. Both have been really good against the run. That's something we've seen from the Eagles for a while now. The Ravens defense just across the board has been pretty good, especially against receivers. Uh, Now, the one spot that you can typically beat the Ravens is the tight end position, which... I know uh, it's very difficult if you own Zach Ertz right now, especially after last week, but uh, I feel like this is the week that everyone benches him and he goes off for like 30 fantasy points because that's just how fantasy football works. So uh, as we'll get to in a second, I'm not quite ready to bench Ertz. It it hurts. It hurts, Ertz. It hurts. Uh, The Eagles have been very uh, uh, profitable, though, starting receivers and tight ends against them. So slowing your running backs down, but putting your receivers and tight ends perfect for the Ravens because we're not excited about starting the running backs at (laughs) at any point right now. So makes the Ravens starts and sets easy. The Eagles are the ones that get a little more difficult. So we'll start with the Ravens. We'll we'll do the easy one first. Now, Lamar Jackson has been disappointing for fantasy. I'm not, there's no way of sugarcoating that. If you drafted him, there's absolutely no way you're happy right now. He's had a couple of decent games and last week, and uh, the week three against the, the Kansas City Chiefs, they've been pretty piss poor performances. Uh, and, you know, I'm not sure whether that knee injury that he was supposedly 100% uh, coming into Sunday, but now he's on the injury report again this week. So he's clearly dealing with some kind of ailment. He has been averaging under 200 passing yards a game. It's been pretty gross. And he didn't even have that many rushing yards last last week either. Um, the defense just has been so good that he really hasn't had to do much in their victories and he wasn't able to, uh, you know, rally the team against the Kansas city chiefs. You know, there's been some drops and, and, you know, some of his deep passes have looked good that this just didn't turn into anything, but he's also been missing people deep. I mean, if you have Lamar Jackson, you're not going to bench him, especially not a game against the Eagles where this could end up being a blowout pretty soon. But we thought that last week and the Steelers and Eagles game turned into a really nice fantasy day. So we could see that happen again here. Uh, So Lamar Jackson is still going to remain in our starting spot until we, you know, see a little bit more. Uh, If he puts up multiple stinkers, then we can start talking about benching him. But I'm going to, I'm going to keep the faith in Lamar Jackson, the fantasy MVP from last year. We'll, We'll play him again this week. Marquise Brown had himself a really nice day, still uh, performing really well in the air yards category. And, you know, as long as he can continue to find his way into the end zone, it's going to be a really nice receiver asset there. Hopefully he's like your wide receiver three, but he put up some pretty decent numbers last week. So I can think we can trust him again. As we mentioned, the Eagles have been really bad at slowing down tight ends. So fire at Mark Andrews. You're already going to do that anyway, but he should have a pretty good week. Ravens defense again, you know, with, uh, Carson Wentz throwing a record number of interceptions this year should look for uh, potential defensive score here. Ravens defense, probably the best start on the week. Now, the part about the Ravens that I'm most frustrated with, I'm a little frustrated with Lamar Jackson, but I'm mostly frustrated with the way that this team is deploying the running backs. So last week, Mark Ingram led the team on the ground. Looked pretty he looks pretty washed. I mean, just watching the game, I don't understand why Mark Ingram keeps getting the touches whenever they put Dobbins or Edwards in. Honestly, both of those guys are running better than Ingram, but they trust him, I guess, because you know he's been the veteran, been with that team for a while. But I mean, Edwards was there too. So I don't know. We'll see how much longer this team continues to stick with Ingram. Maybe they're just waiting to unleash the rest of their offense when the schedule gets tougher. Last week, Dobbins had one carry on the ground. It went for 34 yards. He broke two tackles. He looked absolutely fantastic on the run. And then they proceeded to give him zero carries for the remainder of the game. 
I am just baffled by the way that this team is using their running back core. You cannot trust any of them in fantasy. If you had to start one, you got to go with the guy that's getting the volume with Mark Ingram. But like I said, clearly J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards are running with more steam, running with more precision and and fire whenever they get the ball. So hopefully at some point we'll get a little more clarity. Hopefully Ingram ends up seeing more of a back uh, backup role and we get Dobbins and Edwards more involved. Because if Ingram was out of the picture, I think you'd be able to start both of these guys between Dobbins and Edwards because they're both playing really well. Uh, we're not starting any of the other wide receivers here. Not really thinking about that. Now, okay, jumping over to the Eagles. <sighs> this could be a rough game again. You know, this is a, a tough slate of games here for the Eagles before things get really easy. So again, this is a good buy low moment for Miles Sanders, especially if he ends up having a down week here. Last week, he bailed you out with that amazing 70-yard touchdown run against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Outside of that, you know, did get the goal line carry, but that wasn't due to him at all. I think he only had like 10 rushing yards outside of that big 70 yard run so it wasn't a great performance outside of that big run for sanders he's still not as involved in the passing game as we would like to see he should be getting like five to seven targets a game because i mean there's such a lack of receiving talent right now i don't really understand the game script at some point we're going to see the massive Miles sanders blow up game where he's getting you know six or seven receptions as well that should be coming but We'll see what ends up happening with the Ravens. Eagles could be playing from behind, so maybe we see a little bit more check down there, but there's something wrong with Wentz at this point. He looked okay against the Steelers, but still throwing multiple picks. Just does not have the confidence that he that he's had. I don't know if he's gonna re I don't think he's gonna regain it here against the Ravens. So if you have Travis Fulgham, you picked him up off the waiver wire this week. He's not the best start by any means, but I do believe the Eagles are gonna have to pass a lot right now they're averaging the fourth most pass plays in the entire nfl so they're gonna have to pass a lot if they want to have any chance at keeping up with the ravens so i think fulgham is a decent start you know regardless of what you feel about the ravens we'll see if he can do it for three straight weeks in a row he's been the best target there and you're going to want to try to use him before rager comes back once you know rager sean jackson and um alshon jeffrey are back going to be interesting to see whether Fulgham can beat all of those guys out, but I do think Rager will eventually take his job back. Now, as we mentioned, the tight end is the one spot you can typically beat the Ravens in. Man, Ertz has looked washed, and I'm very scared putting him in my lineup, and you might have less faith than me. If you have another tight end option, I totally understand you putting someone else there, but I'm going to give Ertz one more week. I think this is going to be the week he ends up going off because no one's playing him. Uh, Greg Ward did get the touchdown last week, but he's been relegated to second fiddle behind Fulgham. We're not going to be playing any of the other pieces in this offense because of the matchup. I'm really only comfortable starting Sanders, Fulgham, or Ertz. I have the Ravens winning this one pretty decisively. Got the Ravens 32 to the Eagles scoring 20. 